Grace reveal. Okay, so I don't think I've ever really properly reviewed a work before, let alone on this channel. But while browsing around looking at G3 stuff, pretending I'm in the year 2007, as I normally do, I stumbled upon this absolute gem of a webcomic. I absolutely adore the third generation of My Little Pony, so I jumped at the chance to read this webcomic from start to finish. I actually quite enjoyed my time all the way through, and with the recent influx of G3 fans and art and even fan servers coming in, I thought I'd shed a bit of light on this and share it with you all. This is Kimono's Townhouse. Let's start with the basic premise. The world of KT differs a lot from the Hasbro canon, essentially combining elements from the first three original generations, where ponies live lives and jobs much like our own which I think is super neat. Our setup is this. Kimono Vale is a smart, pretty, sophisticated pony. She maintains a high GPA at Ponyville University and has a job on campus too. Kimono scores big when she buys a nice three-story house in the suburbs, a pleasant, quiet stay away from the ruckus of Ponyville. There's only one exception. Due to mortgage costs, she has to share it with the nerdy and excitable Minty Bobbins. From this, each comic goes about showing us the day-to-day -day ups and downs of Kimono and Minty's lives. Like for example, we may see Minty hanging out with her friend group playing Dungeons and Dragons, or Kimono working at a job dealing with other students. The comic is made with humor in mind, but there's a lot of sweet moments as well. I won't spoil any, as the comic does take twists and turns, but the humor itself is quite funny. I will admit, a few of the more technical jokes did fly over my head. I'm no HTML mastermind after all. But most of the humor is so strong in these comics because of one thing I think KT does very well. Relatability. There's this one strip, okay, where Minty drinks tea and spits it out, much to Kimono's surprise. And then goes on to say she doesn't mind tea, it only tasted gross because she was expecting coke. And it's like, yeah, I feel that. That's happened to me. I know what that- I get it. I get it. There are more examples of these super relatable scenarios, and I feel like some of it has to do with the author, Deva Butler, basing some of the comic off her life with her husband. Another way the comic would get immersive is occasional meet and greets with the characters, who would also sometimes reply to users in the comments. Now come on, that's just fun. Speaking of characters, let's talk about them. Kimono and Minty, our main duo, on the surface may seem like your classic dynamic of smart and clean versus dumb and messy, but it's really not that simple. Kimono may seem like she's pompous and even snooty due to her education status, but she's actually quite socially awkward, a trait that brings out the human, uh, well, pony nature in her. Kimono gets embarrassed easily, she's annoyed by grammar mistakes, she's not very knowledgeable in sports or comics, but she still gets along nicely with her friends. If you were to sum Minty up as the dumb funny one, you'd be sorely mistaken. Minty may not be the brightest, but she's not dense either. Minty is a geek, a nerd if you will, and it's adorable. She could be writing JavaScript and troubleshooting hard drives by day, and then dressing up as Batman and playing with her pet duck by night. She always means well, but can sometimes get heated when it comes to particular geeky topics that I'm sure I would get more if I were living in the late 2000s. Nevertheless, I'd say she has some of the funniest jokes. I love Minty, and I'm totally not biased. Spackles is the name of her pet duck, by the way. He's the best character, no doubt. Just look at him. Stunning. Peak perfection. Other notable characters are Kimono's sisters, the gentle, studious Wisteria and the wildly different Cherry Blossom, whose spunk and sass make her out to be quite the arrogant companion. There's Sunny Days, who hates her job and is chill with Minty. Oh my god, she's literally me! Fluttershy and Sparkleworks, who are Kimono and Minty's reliable friends respectively, giving good advice and comfort. There's also Brightly, a major character that I really want to talk about, but really don't want to spoil anything about him that happens in the arcs. He's Kimono's love interest and he's also very smart and quite witty. The question is, will Kimono win his heart over? All the characters are just fun to read about and to watch them interact. Comedic and sweet moments alike. Except for Sweet Song. I hate you, Sweet Song. So let's talk about set design. I absolutely love the choice to use actual pony toys instead of just drawings. An amazing amount of care and craft is put into the background to make locations like the townhouse itself look lively. Small papers on small desks, bags to put small groceries in, beds with covers, computers with screens, and they're all pony-sized. One of my favorite examples I noticed while rereading the series for this video is that in one comic, Minty is seen doodling a picture of Kimono. In all the subsequent comics later on, the drawing is very cutely hung on the fridge. Or how books and signs in Minty's office cubicle actually have writing on them. That's the kind of clever set dressing you're going to get with this read. It's just very charming. You may have noticed Kimono and Minty look different every so often, to the untrained eye like my own. One would assume that they are all just different re-releases of the characters. Actually, these are all custom made. The author literally turned other ponies into Kimono and Minty and a few other characters just to have different poses of them. 
This is extremely effective, as when working with static models, you have to rely on camera angles and where shots are placed to get the feel of the scene done right. With this new variety in the custom poses, it really makes these two feel alive, especially in terms of reactions. Seriously, whenever one of them does this pose towards the camera, I lose it every single time. KT has charm, it has character, comedy, and it's definitely got the craft as well. And bonus points for it being made in the early 2000s. Its last comic was posted on July 23rd, 2014, and while it's certainly sad to see that it's ended, it's also understandable. Posts around this time reveal that it was starting to interfere with the author's schedule, and popularity is declining as well. I understand the comic has come to a close, though I'd kill for a where are they now segment. For real, I'd love to know Minty's opinions on Nintendo Switch Online. But hey, if Plastic Ponies can make me miss them like they're real people, I heavily encourage you to read it too. They're about 400 pages, but they're all really short little comic panels, so it's easy to binge. Or at the very least, go check them out. Who knows, this happened to scratch my nostalgia itch pretty much perfectly. I realize I could have talked a little more about the way KT came to be and the lore in its world, but I just wanted to focus on the general structure as an introductory. I've left a link in the description for both the official live journal page, where the comic was posted like at the very beginning, and then a Wayback Machine to the OG website. Both are perfectly fine options of reading the series. Thanks for letting me splurge about how much I love this geeky little comic and its inhabitants. This has been Partly Pinky, and I hope you enjoyed reading about these two ponies' antics. Seriously, dude, I mean, it has spackles in it. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? It has spackles in it! It's spackles, dude!